Galatians chapter 6. We've been making our way through here for some time, and we are nearing the end, as there are six chapters, and we are in chapter 6. And we will be looking at verse 6 this morning. So, this particular sermon is a little awkward, can, seem, can feel a little awkward to me, um, but you'll see why here in a moment. Um, I've been serving at this church for 18 years. By, by the end of December this year, it'll be 18 years that we've been here. We watched our girls grow up here at this church. And uh, during those 18 years, I've preached somewhere between 750 and 800 Sunday morning sermons. So it's, hard. it's, it's amazing when you think about it that way. Um, the majority of those sermons have been preached by moving through a particular book of the Bible, paragraph by paragraph. So it's never a question of, what am I going to preach this week? It's just the next section, the next paragraph. And so that way, God's word is determining what will be preached each week and when those dates will fall. Um, It's simply the next paragraph. Now, some pastors uh, have been known to go through and select certain passages that they like, and preach those passages because in some way those passages are beneficial to them. And they kind of go through and select, cherry-pick special ones that they particularly like for their own own benefit. Um, I trust that you can see that that hasn't been my practice over these these years. Um, I say all this because my preaching of the passage for this morning, the next section this morning, could could be interpreted as self-serving. And I hope that you don't see it that way. I see it as the next section and as my responsibility to continue through the book and to do my best to help you understand what it means and how it applies. Um, I've preached approximately 24 sermons in Galatians alone to reach this point. Um, And we probably, so it's been about six months to get here to this particular verse. And it's probably before maybe five more sermons to follow to complete the study of Galatians. So in these 18 years, I don't think I've ever preached on the topic of this particular verse, this particular passage before. Uh, And this is the kind of passage that it would be ideal to invite another pastor to come in and to preach this particular section um, in in my place. But that wasn't possible to do this time. So we're going to press ahead. And take a look. Um, this, this, we're going to see what God has to say to us this morning through this passage. And um, this applies no matter who the pastor is. right? You, I'm not going to be here forever at this church. Um, and that's not a clue that I'm getting ready to leave. So don't get worried about that. Some of you, some of, and some are saying, darn, I wish she was. <laughs> But, um, and, and, you know, you may not be here forever either. God may move you somewhere else as well. So whoever your pastor is, now and in the future, these things apply, okay? Whoever the pastor may be. Verse 6 of Galatians 6 says, Let the one who is taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Okay, that's the, that's the paragraph, that's the verse for this morning. Now, some believe that the pastor should be poor so that he is forced to depend on God for God's supply. Um, So many pastors don't get paid very much. Um, But it doesn't seem to occur to these people with this opinion that God has selected them to be the means of his supply for their pastor. Some churches determine how much to pay their pastors by surveying what other churches pay so that we can have a competitive wage, right, for our pastor. Again, the problem is is that most pastors are significantly underpaid, and so the trend continues, right, unless they're part of a, of a mega church, which has tons of money. Some churches believe a pastor should be compensated based on performance review, the number of hours worked. The problem is is that most people don't understand what a pastor does outside of his office hours. Many things. Um, 
that go on. Um, some believe that a pastor should be compensated so that he can live and function at the same level as his people that he's ministering to, right? So he's not always below them, but he's on par with them. Um, if he's not, then many times he's forced to take on a, an additional job to help make his bills and, and keep, keep his nose above water. Or sometimes his wife may have to take a job. And both of these things have an impact on the pastor's ability to minister to the people and carry out that work. Um, some believe that the pastor is to be an example to his congregation in all areas, including his finances. So I heard one pastor say that the church gave him an increase, and he said to the, to the leadership of the church, I don't need that. You already pay me more than enough. I, I don't need this. And they said to him, we know, but we want to see what you're going to do with the extra as an example to our people. Okay? So, all of that to say, this morning we want to take a look at what God's Word has to say about sharing with the one who teaches. So let's look at Galatians 6, and let me read verses 6 through 10 um, to give the context. Galatians 6, verse 6. Let the one who is taught the Word share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity let us do good to everyone, especially to those who are of the household of God. Now, as we look at this one verse here this morning, verse 6, um, we're going to approach this by asking five questions. Five questions to help us understand what it means to share all good things. And we need to understand these things so that we know that we are sowing to the Spirit. Okay? So the first of those questions is, what does it mean to share all good things? What does it mean to share all good things? We saw verse 6 there, that that's what it says, is to share all good things with the one who teaches. Uh, this probably refers back in, in connection to verse 2 of chapter 6, uh, which talks about the idea of bearing one another's burdens, and so fulfilling the law of Christ. Um, so it indicates the idea, if we look at the word here that's used for share, it indicates the idea of a partnership, a partnership, okay? It's to, it's to give or to contribute a share to someone. Uh, that's kind of the Greek lexicon definition. Um, it's to participate in something along with someone else, to be involved in something by contributing. Um, and the word seems to have financial nuance to it, according to the, the lexicons and Greek dictionaries and so on. So by sharing your material goods, you are participating in the ministry of, of your teacher and the work of the Lord that has, is being done. You're participating in that. You know, and, and many of you have done this in the English congregation. Um, several years ago, um, some brothers and sisters came together when we were struggling with family transportation. We only had one vehicle, and we often had two different places to go at the same time. And so the, some of the brothers and sisters um, pooled some resources and provided for us a, a 97 Toyota, which is still in the parking lot here this morning. That, it hasn't been sitting in that parking lot all that time. <laughs> I, I drove it here this morning, is what I'm trying to say. And it's still running, and, it's, and it's, it's serving its purpose quite well, and we're quite grateful for that. Um, some other brothers and sisters have, have made it possible for me to continue my, my education in seminary and have contributed to that process as well. And Lord willing, um, in May, that will be done. Um, I'll, Lord willing, graduate in May from that process. But brothers and sisters have contributed to make that possible. 
And this is, this is kind of the idea of partnering and, and sharing in that ministry. Um, so it's the idea of physical goods. And, and again, this is God's plan. Right? It's God's intention that the, the minister of the gospel be able to focus his attention on the ministry he's been given without distraction to be concerned about these other issues. Okay. Uh, second response here to this first question is it indicates the idea of generous giving. Okay, uh, The idea says, let the one who was taught share. That, that expression, let them share, um, it in- indicates in the grammar, generously share. Okay, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 17 says, <clears throat> For the rich in this present age charge them not to be haughty, not to set their hopes on uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. Verse 18, they are to be, I'm sorry, they are to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, thus storing up treasure for themselves as a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of that which is truly life. So it's this idea of sharing, it's this idea of sharing in a generous way. And um, most commentators referring to this passage say that this is one of the the prime indicators um, of of life in in the Spirit's concern for others. I didn't say that right. One of the prime indicators of life in the Spirit is concern for others. We talked about walking in the Spirit, living by the Spirit, and when there is a concern for others to share with others, that's an indicator that the Spirit is at work in that person's heart, that they're walking in the Spirit. That's, that's the idea. It's a practical manifestation of that presence of the Spirit by helping with material support. Second question <clears throat> to help us clarify this issue of what it means to share all good things is, what are the all good things that are to be shared? Right? What is it that we're supposed to be sharing? What are those things? Um, it can refer to spiritual blessings, right? Sharing spiritual blessings. We see it used that way in some passages to indicate that idea in certain contexts, right? So it would be the, the blessings of the gospel. Um, so they could share in the minister's work by helping to spread the gospel, partnering with him. Um, they can share in the minister's work by um, helping to proclaim spiritual truth to brothers and sisters to help them in their maturity and their growth. So some contexts use it that way, the term that way, the good things. Um, But more likely, again, um, based on the grammar and on Greek resources, indicate it's more likely that it refers to material things in this context. Um, Possessions or treasures is the definition in the Bauer, Art, and Gingrich lexicon, which doesn't mean anything to you, but that is the kind of the premier Greek dictionary of the Greek language, especially for Bible. Um, so it can refer to material compensation, financial support, things like that. Uh, in Luke 16, verse 25, <clears throat> says, uh, but Abraham said, child, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things. That's the term. And Lazarus, in his manner, bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. This is the the account that Jesus refers to of the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man is in torment. Lazarus is in the presence of the Lord. And and, and the rich man is complaining about his condition. And he's asking God to send Lazarus to to give him some water, right? Dip his finger in the water and cool my tongue and, and so on. And so the Lord reminds him, he says to the rich man, you had your good things during life, and Lazarus had bad things. So that helps us to clarify the idea of what's being talked about in the context here of our passage. A third question to look at is, <clears throat> who is to share all good things? Right? And these aren't rocket science, right? These are pretty straightforward, but I'm just trying to break it down so we see it clearly. Um, who is to share all good things? Well, it says in the verse, the one who is taught. The one who is being taught. 
is to share all good things. That would be the congregation of believers. Um, each believer is to help bear the material support of their pastor in the church. Um, perhaps in the context of Galatians, the Galatians, some of the Judaizers that we've talked so much about were influencing some in the church to withhold their support from maybe Paul and some of the others who were teaching the same things that Paul taught because they wanted to quiet those teachings and reinforce their legalistic teachings of the works of the law and of circumcision and those outward practices of religion. And so wanting to, to quiet them down, withdraw their support. But Paul maybe here is saying, don't do that. You need to share with them who are teaching you the truth. Uh, that seems to be the idea. And so this idea of voluntarily giving to provide for the Lord's servants was a revolutionary idea. It was a new thing, for, especially in Paul's day, um, the first century time. Jews, they were taxed in order to support their priesthood, right? They paid taxes, and that's how their priesthood was supported. Um, the Gentiles, they paid fees to, again, sustain their religions. So it was kind of an enforced, um, an enforced method. Um, but we know it's here it's that we are to give freely, to give um, generously, to give of our own free will to help in this process. So this was a new concept. And so the ones who are being taught, and what is it that they're being taught? Well, the passage tells us, right? It's not, it's not teaching auto mechanics. It's not teaching how to cook. It's not teaching other things like that. It's those who are taught the word, right? They're taught the scriptures. They're taught God's word, um, the gospel message. They're proclaiming the gospel message so that, or they're receiving the gospel message so that they can come to know Christ as their Savior. They're receiving spiritual truth from God's word so that they can grow and mature in their faith and become engaged in ministering to others as well. Um, the fourth question to help us clarify, who are all good things to be shared with? Okay, who are they to be shared with? And again, that's what our passage says. Um, the one who teaches is what's referred to here. The one who teaches. Um, the one who teaches um, on a regular basis has the, the burden of immersing himself in the study of God's word so that he's prepared and capable of teaching the people of the church. Um, this, is not a, this is not a casual thing. This is not a, an easy task. Um, but this, this, this minister of the gospel has that burden to do, but he also has the burden of supplying for his family, to take care of his family, of his um, financial obligations, of his children and his wife and so on. Um, so this, this idea, if you remember back in verse 2 again of Galatians 6, it says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. So it would seem in context to indicate the congregation is to help bear that financial burden so that, again, the minister of the gospel is, is more free to focus on the work of ministry instead of having his attention split between I have to work a second job or my wife has to work a second job or because she works a second job, I have these extra tasks that I have to take care of as well, which, which impact ministry. Um, so the church can help bear the burden so that focus can be strengthened on the ministry of the word in preparation for ministry. Um, so we give example, right? When we have a guest speaker come to preach here, we give them an honorarium, right, to help encourage them, to help um, bear their burden because when they come, they've worked and prepared in order to share with us and they've taken the time and energy <clears throat> to help um, share with us. With, with missionaries that we support, we, again, we financially help support these missionaries so that they can be more free to focus on the missions work that they are doing instead of having to hold a job and try to do this work at the same time. That's, that's the basic idea. So Paul is exhorting the Galatians to take good care of those who taught them important things about the Christian life. 
right? They devote themselves uh, to teaching, right? They devote themselves to teaching. That's the emphasis. When I first became a pastor here um, at the church, I had a, a friend um, who's not a, not a Christian friend, um, and he had said, I'd known him for a long time, and he, he said to me, you know, well, congratulations on your position as a pastor. I know you've been working towards that for a long time, and I, I'm really glad for you. I'm, you know, congratulations. And he said, I just have a question for you. Said, sure, what, what's the question? He says, well, I know what you do on Sunday, but what do you do the rest of the week? <laughs> was his question. And obviously he's an unchurched person. He doesn't have that understanding. And it's like, well, it's hours of study. It's hours of, of learning. Um, it's hours of ministering to people. It's hours of praying for people. It's hours of working with the church leaders to develop direction and purpose and, you know, so on, vision for the church and things like that. So, but uh, he, he, he had a hard time getting his mind around around that idea, because all he knew about church was Sunday morning for an hour or two, and that was it. Um, so if you remember our guys here, some of our guys preached through the book of Colossians. Do you remember that? We were still back up in the main sanctuary, and we, we took them through a class of learning how to preach and worked through how to break down the passage and find the main points and how to construct an outline and how to frame that and present that and, and so on and how to determine what the passage is really about. And, and as we went through that process of multiple weeks of preparation leading up to the time when they would preach, one of the guys in the group looked at me during one of the sessions and he says, this is hard. <laughs> and I said, yeah, <laughs> it is hard. It takes effort. It takes, it's not something to be taken lightly. Um, <clears throat> a fifth question to help us clarify uh, this idea of sharing all, all good things is, again, and we've already kind of talked about it along the way, but I just want to frame here more specifically. Um, why are all good things to be shared? And uh, originally I put down five. I think I have six here altogether once I finally finish my notes. But uh, first reason why... <clears throat> Uh, those who minister spiritually have no, minister, those who minister spiritually have no portion. It says. So if you were to look in the Old Testament at Deuteronomy, in chapter twelve, verse twelve, it says, "All you shall rejoice before the Lord your God, and your sons and your daughters, your male servants and your female servants, and the Levite that is with you, uh, with within your towns, since he has no portion or inheritance with you." Now, the people of Israel are moving into the land, and are gonna, different tribes are being assigned certain portions of land to be theirs, to take care of, and to live on, and to be supplied through that land. The Levites weren't given a particular portion of land. And so the others had their work to do in that land. The Levites didn't have that. Their, their job was the work of the tabernacle, right? And ultimately, later on, the temple to take care of those things. And so that was their focus, was that ministry for the people, on behalf of the people. And for them to have an outside career and to also take care of the temple was, again, dividing their focus. And so he says in verse 19 of Deuteronomy 12, take care that you do not neglect the Levite as long as you live in your land. So even back to the Old Testament, Deuteronomy, we see this concept of um, sharing good things with those who are teaching and who are leading. A second reason that you should share all good things <clears throat> is those receiving spiritual blessing should serve by material blessing. Okay? Those who receive spiritual blessing should serve by material blessing. Romans 15, uh, verse 25. At present, however, I am going to Jerusalem bringing aid to the saints, Paul says. For Macedonia and Achaia have been pleased to make some contribution for the poor among the saints at Jerusalem. For they were pleased to do it, and indeed they owe it to them. For if they, if, I'm sorry, for if the Gentiles have come to share in their spiritual blessings, they ought also to be of service to them in material blessings. Okay, it's that same concept there. 
spiritual blessings um, extended and material blessings in return um, is the idea. Uh, and third reason to share all good things uh, comes in Matthew 10. Um, the laborer deserves his food. The laborer deserves his food. Uh, verse 5 of Matthew 10 says, These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and proclaiming um, as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You received without paying. Give without pay. Verse 9, acquire no gold or silver or copper for your belts, um, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for the laborer deserves his food. And so what Jesus was telling them was, look, don't load up a big backpack full of supplies or a wagon to drag behind you with your supplies. As you go and minister the word in a spiritual way, these people should respond to you with material things. You're worthy. You're the laborer. You're worthy of your food, of your support through that ministry. That's the idea. And that's Jesus talking to the 12 who are being sent out to, to minister. Fourth reason that you should share all good things is you should not muzzle the ox when he treads. You say, what in the world does a farming have to do with this, with an ox? Um, so 1 Corinthians 9, Paul is speaking. This is a little bit longer section, but we're going to put the verses up on the screen there for you so you can follow along. If you go to the next part there, 1 Corinthians 9, um, he starts off in verse 1, which isn't on the slide. It picks up at verse 3. But verse 1 says, Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Or are not you my workmanship in the Lord? If to others I am not an apostle, at least I am to you. For you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. Now verse 3 on the screen. This is my defense to those who would examine me. Do we not have the right to eat and drink? Do we not have the right to take along a believing wife, as do the other apostles and the brothers of the Lord and Cephas? Or is it only Barnabas and I, Paul says, who have no right to refrain from working for a living? Who serves as a soldier at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard without eating of its fruit? Or who tends a flock without getting some of the milk? So in other words, those who put that kind of work in, they benefit from the work that they're doing. Same principle he's applying here. Right? Those who are doing work of the ministry, uh, particularly this idea of teaching and giving spiritual truth, are to, to gain their support by partaking of material things through that process. Verse 8 of First Corinthians 9. Do I say these things on human authority? Does not the law say the same? For it is written in the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain. Let's pause there for a second. The ox was a large animal, strong animal, and it was hooked up to this instrument that was used that it would pull, usually in a circle, and it would grind up the grain. And as the ox was doing this work, grain would be falling to the ground. And the ox was able to bend down and eat some of that grain to sustain him as he did his work. So he was benefiting from that work uh, for his support, for his strength. Now, he takes that same principle out of the Old Testament and applies it to ministers of the gospel in the New Testament. He says in verse, uh, next part of that verse, it is, is it for oxen that God is concerned? Right? Is, it, is, God, is he worried about the oxen? Is that the main reason he brought that up? Make sure you don't muzzle your oxen so your oxen can eat. It's like, no, he's making an analogy. He's making a comparison. He says in verse 10, Does he not certainly speak for our sake? It was written for our sake because the plowman should plow in hope of the th of, and the thresher thresh in hope of sharing in the crop. Again, two different aspects of farming work. And those who are doing that farming work were able to receive benefit from that farming work for their sustenance. 
Um, Verse 11, if we have sown spiritual things among you, is it too much if we reap material things from you? That's that's the principle, again. And uh, again, that Deuteronomy 25, verse 4, is what he's quoting from about not muzzling an ox. That's the idea. A fifth reason we should share in all good things is you should consider the laborer worthy. You should consider the laborer worthy. Uh, 1 Timothy 5, verse 17. says, Let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. And then he says, verse 18, For the scripture says, You shall not muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain. Refers to that same thing again. And again, um, refers back to what Jesus said. Says the laborer deserves his wages. So again, that means of support for those who are focused particularly on the ministries of of teaching and preaching. Their support comes um, from those that are receiving of their ministry. Uh, And then a sixth, final reason to share all good things. Um, which we'll get to next week in a little more detail, um, you will reap what you sow. You will reap what you sow. Now, the idea of sowing, we're not talking about needle and thread kind of sowing. Maybe that's what we're thinking of. That's S-E-W. This is S-O-W. Um, the farmer goes out and he sows seeds in his land to grow crops, right? So he would have a bag, like a mailman's bag, I'm sorry, a letter carrier's bag. We've got to be politically correct, right? And he would take seed and throw that seed onto the plowed land so that it can grow and produce crops. So it's the idea of of what you distribute is what you will reap. And reaping is the harvesting time. You, You sow the seeds, you plant the seeds, and then later as it grows, you go back and you harvest what has grown. And we're going to see this principle that when you sow sparingly, you only put out a few seeds, how big is your crop going to be? Small. But if you put out a lot of seeds, how big will your crop be? Big. So there's that idea of generosity and not just being generous, but benefiting from your generosity. Do you see that? That's the idea. And so our section next week will get more into detail, but look at verse 7 of Galatians 6. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. So as you support whoever your pastor might be, um, as you are generous in supporting him, you will receive blessing in a generous way. If you are sparing in how you support him, then it will minimize the blessing that you receive back. That's the principle. And we'll see that a little more clearly next week as we get into that next section. So Paul is encouraging churches to support their pastors who preach and teach so that they can focus on the ministry unhindered by worry of material goods and so that the people will benefit greatly from that ministry of their pastor as they've partnered with him to make that more possible. So you say, well, how do we practically do that? Well, we have, we, this, this church doesn't pass an offering plate. Churches I grew up in, they would, would pass an offering plate for a collection, the way we pass the communion elements. Um, so they would pass an offering plate, and people would contribute that way to that work. Um, our church doesn't do that for um, various reasons, and, um, but we do have an offering box. And then here it's just outside the door and to the left, on that little table, looks like a little church building. And upstairs, also in the back of the main sanctuary, there's another similar box. And those are for, instead of passing the plate, those boxes are there for this, for this purpose of, of giving and contributing. So as you have received, you are to respond um, with, uh, with material blessings to help to sustain your leaders, to sustain this, the ministry of the church as well. Okay, so let's pray, and we'll come back next week and look at that next section. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for its clarity. 
Lord, we pray that you would help us to respond obediently to your word, that we would realize uh, our role in the ministry, how we can help sustain and encourage and strengthen the ministry. Um, We pray for the leaders who work hard, who work diligently, and um, we pray that you would provide um, for those needs that that ministry may continue. Um, Lord, we also just pray that your word would continue to spread. Um, And as your people are receiving your word, they are better equipped to go out and spread the word to others to partner with and to participate in the ministry that you have given to us. Lord, we desire to be a lighthouse and a testimony. And we pray that you would work in our hearts to understand and to respond. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's stand for the doxology.